Look at that. Isn't that oh, something? This makes it all worth the effort. Hey guys, it's Mark Gill. This is Mark's on the Grill. Honey is the camera lady. She's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome to our show, you guys. Welcome to dinner with the family. Uh, we are going to do something very special for you tonight. We've decided to do something called a London broil. Now, if you're not familiar with that, uh, it's where you take that really tough cut of meat, marinate the out of it, and you end up with just the tastiest, tender, Oh man, it's really good. But first of all, and before we get going, do me a favor, uh, and we'll remind a couple of times throughout the show, we love growing this party, you guys. So if you've uh, you know dropped in on our videos and you're having a good time, hit that share button, help us grow this, invite your friends, we love it. Now, for a good London broil, oh, and by the way, stick around because we have our little, uh, uh, little mini crab cakes going. We got our Blackstone fired up in the deep fryer. Oh God, they're gonna be good. And uh, we're even gonna, we're gonna do a salad too. Whoa. My vegetable of the week. Now, uh, before we get going, guys, uh, we, we've got our grill ready. But before you do a London broil, the most important part is the marinade. So, guys, check out how we did that. A London broil actually refers to the preparation method, not the type of cut. So, if you're at the supermarket and you can't find something that's called a London broil, it's okay. Ask them for a top round. That's the same thing. Now, here's the thing about a London broil cut or a top round that's all it's ever going to be. You're not going to be able to make this anything but this, nothing else. So your freedom and your creativity comes in the marinade and that's what a London broil refers to. So let me show you what we're gonna use for our marinade and then we're gonna start stabbing the heck out of our steak here, okay? Uh, come on in here and I'm gonna show you. We have uh, eight ounces of barbecue sauce, use your favorite, four ounces of olive oil, four ounces of balsamic vinegar, some salt, pepper, garlic, and some real garlic. So guys, uh, here we go, we're gonna go ahead and let's get that in there. One of those. One of those. Okay, Trish. Uh, oh, there one. Good. One of those. There we go. Get the balsamic in there. Now, uh, the garlic, you can do whatever you want with. You can uh, slice it, crush it, mince it, beat it, yell at it, whatever. Uh, I like to mince the garlic into stuff like this. That way it really gets everywhere. So there's one. Here comes a dog, two. It says to use three cloves, but I'm gonna use four, because I wanna. There we are. And four, just like. All right, so four of those. Now, we're gonna grab our whisk, do a little bit of a stir. So now that's our marinade. There we go. Uh, of course, the vinegar breaks down the fiber, the, uh, you know, the, the flavor is coming in the garlic and the sauce. There we go. The oil gets nice and deep in there, starts breaking down that fiber as well. So now, like I said, the meat's the meat, the meat, the meat, the meat. The meat's all it's ever gonna be. So we wanna tenderize the meat. You can either use a knife, a fork, uh, we like one of these meat tenderizers, and just start working out your aggressions. Too much? <laughs> oh yeah, it feels good. Very therapeutic. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and flip it. Pass me my tongs there, Smitty. Right beside you. There we go. Ooh, takes a lot out of you. And alive. I think I have to talk to somebody. There we go. And do it again. I think we're good. <laughs> now you're gonna grab a gallon size. Zip on my forearms are burning. I love it. <laughs> Go ahead and grab that guy. Now, um, of course, all those little stab marks are gonna take all of that marinade in and really give this a nice, nice flavor. So, you're gonna look to do this anywhere from six hours ahead of time until overnight. All right, so grab your little Ziploc bag and what you should be doing over a sink, I will do carelessly in front of my wife I know is thinking this can't go anything but bad. There we are. <laughs> now, start the seal right here and then start getting the air out of it. If you've got a fancy uh, air sucking system, now is the time to dig it out. There we are. All right, so now you're just gonna go ahead, put this in the fridge, all right? The salt, pepper, garlic, we're gonna go ahead and put on the steak right before it goes on the big green egg. So that's your marinade. We'll see you in about six and a half hours. Uh, 
All right, very cool. So guys, uh, we got our steaks ready a little bit earlier today. And now what we're gonna end up doing is uh, we're gonna go ahead and we got our Blackstone fired up, which is very cool. We're gonna do our uh, little shrimp balls, our shrimp croquettes, our mini shrimp crab cakes, whatever it is we wanna call them. <laughs> we're gonna do that in the deep fryer, which is super cool. I love that. So come on over here and let's have a quick peek. Uh, we've got our, oh, oh go, by the way, uh, you know what, we really, before we get into this, we really should explain what we're doing. But first of all, um, I want you to see something here, all right? We've got our little, uh, our quick instant read uh, thermometer, and you're going to see that this guy, our London broil right now, should be right around still about 110 degrees, okay? And uh, just kind of, you know, have a nice little look at that steak and check out the temperature on that, uh, on that egg, and we're going to show you exactly how we got there. I didn't want to bore you with uh, making you watch coal light or heat up or do any of that stuff. So we, uh, we came out here just a little bit earlier so we could show you how we set this up in the offset position and got ourselves to 110 degrees. And then we're gonna get some serious sear action going and we're gonna get those uh, uh, crab balls frying. Check this out. Guys. Daisy's ready, perfect. So now we're at the point where we have to get our big green egg set up in the indirect grilling position because we are gonna do a reverse sear on our London broil. It's the easiest way to cook a thicker cut of meat on an open fire grill, uh, being able to control the temperature just a little bit more and how evenly it cooks. So uh, what we've done is we've gone ahead and we put our jumbo lump charcoal in here. Don't use briquettes, drives me nuts. Uh, this is the best way to get the best flavor out of your food, but we gotta get it lit, okay? So what I've done, um, I'm one of these guys that is not really a big fan of anything, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, chemically, you, you know, either you know, print on paper or fire starters, things like that. I'd rather light the grill, uh, you know, just, just with some charcoal. So I put a few pieces in the chimney. So what we'll do is we'll move these around, get them spread out so they start in different places evenly. And what that's going to do is it'll give us an even start in that, uh, in that pit of charcoal there. So when it comes time for us to take all of the uh, indirect cooking stuff out of there, it's going to come back up to temperature really fast. You'll see what I mean later. So now what we have to do is take our uh, accelerator place setting. I'm not sure what this is called. Do that or they change it. Set it right on top like that. There we go. And then, ooh, is that a nice one? We got a private jet this time. Look at G5. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then put your grill grate right on top. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let this come up to about 250 to 275 degrees. I'll meet you back out here with the London broil that's been marinating inside, and we're going to put it on there and use our uh, our thermometer so we can keep an eye on it. All right. And here we are. Come on and have a look. 250 and holding. That's what you want to see right there. So I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up. Yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so our London broil, we took it out of the marinade. It's been in there for about six-ish hours, somewhere in there. Um, pat it down dry. Dry as you can do it. Pat it down. I used to make the mistake of, like, uh, leaving it on there, thinking that I was going to make some sort of crust or, you know, some sort of special flavor. All it does is just kind of makes it steam. So, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Let me grab this and that on there like that. Trying to get it in the center as much as possible. There we are. And I'll use the other hand. Get that one to go. By the way, this is just salt, pepper, garlic. Nothing fancy, nothing special. I'm not an over-spicer kind of guy. There we are. Done. And last but not least, we want to make sure we keep an eye on this temperature. So we're going to take our uh, thermometer probe, put it right into kind of the thickest part of the meat, right in the middle there. Center that back up. Great. Um, be careful with the type of thermometer you use here, okay? Because you're going to start dealing at one point with some pretty high temperatures. So the ones that are silicone, guys, don't uh, you, you know, might not be the type of thing for this. Uh, this one's nice. It's got the metal probe. It's good like 750, 800 degrees. I don't think we're going to get there. Uh, so let's go ahead and close that up. This is what we want to see, 500 to 600 degrees right there. That's what we're gunning for. That's what's going to give us that reverse sear, sear part of it. The sear part of the reverse sear. Have I got that? Perfect. So let's go ahead and open that up. Woo! That's hot. I like that. And let's take this guy. Now, this is already seasoned, already done. It's perfectly marinated. We're just going to go ahead and put it right there like that. Now, you're going to want to do about five to six minutes aside, somewhere in there. We've got our thermometer to check it out. Now, I don't want to leave the lid open on this, all right, simply because that's going to get it way too hot. So let's just give this a few minutes, and while we're at that, come on over here, uh, and let's check out our Blackstone again. This is our Blackstone combo, range top, range top combo, one of the two, <laughs> right? And this is the one that comes with a fryer, which is just the coolest darn thing I've ever seen. Talk about expanding your repertoire out, 
out in the backyard. Again, guys, you know what? Uh, I'll remind you one more time. If you, uh, you know, if you got a, a bunch of friends that you know love outdoor cooking, hit that share button for us. Hit that uh, like and follow button. We're always keeping an eye on that. We're always giving away some free stuff. We love doing that. Uh, uh, you know, just just as a way to say thank you. Uh, so come on in here, and we are going to go ahead and utilize this guy. This is the best. Oh, we have been loving this fryer. So um, listen. Frying's not the hel uh, healthiest thing in the world, but if you fry right, which means keep that temperature somewhere around the 350 to 375 degrees, you super sear the outside of these guys, which means that you're not soaking up quite as much oil. Now that's what I tell myself to feel better about all this. Now we are live and we are not on fire. <laughs> it's important to dip your crab cakes first. All right, keep the... Keep, quickly, keep the camera lady on her toes. <laughs> so here we go. And you can see from the flash of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of grease boiling up that our temperature is perfect. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, give that a little shake. Yeah, everything we do here is live, guys. So listen, if something goes wrong, you'll be the first to know. If it goes really wrong. <laughs> now, this has been a few minutes. So what I want to do now is just go ahead and do that uh, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, see if we can't get ourselves a couple of grill marks on this guy. There we are, and we'll check it for about another three minutes like that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a stickler with the thermometer. I want to go ahead and keep an eye on that. We are going to shoot for, make sure we turn that back on. We're going to shoot for about 135, 140 before we take that guy off. So we are, we are doing very well. All right, another few minutes on that side, and then we're going to flip it over. Let's go check this out. We always like to have lots of going on here. Lots of opportunities to set ourselves on fire. She's like way back there now. <laughs> I can't even believe it. Come on over here, guys. Look at this. This is beautiful. This happens quick, man. By the way, the lovely camera lady also put these guys together for us today. And I can't wait to get into those. We got some recipes online, you guys, about how we make our crab cakes. Super, super simple. Less is more on those things. Uh, you don't want to load it with a bunch of filler and, and breadcrumbs and eggs and all that kind of stuff. Really, really simple, like half a cup of breadcrumbs, I think, a little squirt of mustard, a little squirt of Worcestershire sauce. And then, uh, um, what else goes in there? A little Old Bay, uh, a little salt, pepper, parsley. Uh, what's that? Oh, I forgot the lemon. This will be a lemonless crab ball. <laughs> Sometimes lemon. <laughs> I love it, All right? But just little bits. And you want to like uh, mix it gently. Mix it gently. You don't want to go crazy with it. It's not a hamburger. Mix it gently, all right? What's it? Fold. Fold, fold and roll, fold and roll. Like I'm gonna fold and roll this uh, tin foil before Daisy turns it into ugh, her appetizer. The dogs love this place. Let me tell you something. Absolutely love it. How are these things doing? Pretty. Look at that. We're close to the color. I gotta tell you something, man. We used a full pound of jumbo lump crab in these. This is one of those ones where you go to like the appetizer up in Maryland and you get those little like the little crab balls and two of those suckers is like twelve ninety five. Not that it's not worth it. All right, I like it, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I, I don't know. All right, here we go, let's give this a flip. We getting in there? Let's get some, do we get some grill marks? Oh my goodness, that's pretty. Oh yeah, there we go. So let's go ahead and check where we're at. All right, so again, we're shooting about 135 or 140. So let's close the lid on that guy, not too worried about the grill marks on the other side. Nice, all right, what should we do now? You are gonna knock that table over. That's what's gonna happen there. I know what we can do. Cheers to the Tampa Bay Lightning who have, who had a wonderful, wonderful regular season. You guys did great. And thank you for all the, 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 the joy and happiness you gave us this season. Sorry you got swept in the first round of the playoffs. That was a little, that was a little tough. <laughs> I feel for you guys though. I gotta tell you, I, I, I don't even know what that feels like. Guys, have a great summer. <laughs> oh, man. All right. We got uh, another few seconds with that, and that one's going to be good. In fact, I think I'm happy with those. You happy with that? All right, I'm happy with that. All right. Mm. So, again, cheers to the lightning. <laughs> what the hell am I going to watch now? All right. You know what? There's still two Canadian teams left in it. That's big. Two Can Calgary and is it Toronto? Toronto's got good luck in the playoffs. They always fare out all right. <laughs> I hope Steph wasn't watching. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a dirty word in my inbox. Here we go. All right. How are we looking? Boy, this is gonna time out really nice. Okay. Go ahead there. Perfect. Hey. Um, 
Did you say that uh, you were able to see it on your phone? Yeah. Because I couldn't see it on mine. So I'm going to throw out a little thing to Scott here, okay? Um, watch out there. You're going you're gonna to kick it. I'm going to take the camera from Trish for a second and have a little bit of fun. And she's going to check her phone. And if Scott, if you're watching, I want to give away a Miracle Grow mat. I really do. All I need is a name. All right, so here, give, give me the camera here. There we go. You go check your phone and see if Scott, double time, can give us a name of a winner of a Miracle Grow mat. All right, now, I'm not very good on the camera because that's not what I do. <laughs> Let's look at these things. Oh, yeah. Those are nice. I like that. Hey, Mark, what do you use in the egg instead of charcoal? Uh, good question. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big charcoal fan in there uh, or anything that's going to give any kind of chemically uh, uh, residue as you leave it behind. I'm a, a, a jumbo lump charcoal. That's what we're at there. All right, let's check this out. Okay, check this out. There we are. We're only a few degrees away. I love that. Perfect. Uh, what else is coming up? Uh, hey, listen, Friday morning, if you are uh, an insomniac or a late night person or just have absolutely nothing else to do at 4 o'clock in the morning, we will be on HSN with the Aroma Air Fryer. That's a, a super fun guy we've been working with for like weeks here. I love Aroma. They're cool guys. Now, don't, uh, don't worry. You'll get a chance on Saturday to see it in the afternoon too. And then on uh, Friday afternoon, I think we have uh, another launch of our uh, um, Hot Logic uh, portable ovens. Those things are great. Hey, listen, if any of you guys are watching, our uh, um, uh, healthcare professionals, truck drivers, you travel, teachers, anybody working in an office, put a note on your calendar and check this thing out, man. It's going to be 1 o'clock Friday and 6 a.m. Saturday. It's worth it. This is actually a really cool thing. I, I love getting blown away by brand new products. And I can tell you, that thing blew me away. All right, guys, so I'm pretty sure we're here, and I can stop poking the bejesus out of this guy. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. So let's get you off and resting have a look at that oh yeah check that out nice and close isn't that pretty that's what i call a pretty steak oh yeah man alive and it's all about that marinade man it's all about that six hours to overnight in the fridge with the balsamic the olive oil the barbecue sauce the garlic oh the garlic tell you about it all right so let's close this up and i'm always uh, i always tell you uh, choke the air off top and bottom and the charcoal that's in there will uh, uh, kind of just uh, fizzle out, and you can use it next time. Saves you a lot of money on charcoal as you go on. So listen, we've got, uh, got everything kind of hot and fresh here. We've got those guys going. Let's plate them up. And then the last thing to do while we wait for our steak dun, 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 to rest. By the way, never cut into a steak before at least about 10 minutes. If you got 20, 25, guys, that's even better. You got to remember, when you cook a steak, it's got a lot of moisture in it from the fat, right? So the heat kind of sends all that moisture and fat running scared to the middle of the steak. Uh, the more you cook it, the more the moisture ends up running there and you cook you know, around the outside. So what ends up happening is, once your steak is cooked, all that moisture is sitting right in the middle, man. It's just everybody looking around, bored, doesn't know what to do. If you cut the steak too soon, all of that moisture that's in the middle there, out it goes. And all you're left with is the dry from that middle part all the way out. But if you let it rest, you just hang out. If you think about how great the hockey playoffs would have been for the next two months, if the second best team in NHL history made it out of the first round of the playoffs, then what you end up getting paid off with is all of those juices start to go back out to the outside, right? That's what starts to happen. That's why the longer you wait, the longer you wait, you cut into that steak, man, and sometimes it just looks like the color's painted around the outside and it's just that red or pink in the middle. Longer you let it rest, better it's going to look, all right? So let's get our side dish going. Well, that almost felt like a lecture. <laughs> so um, if you've been to these, uh, you know, some of the fancy steak houses, uh, they'll give you the, they, uh, give you the option of like a wilted salad or wilted spinach or something like that. I don't know if you've ever tried it. It's really, really good. But here's the problem with that stuff, like $17.95. These people insane, right? <laughs> so this is basically what they're doing is they're using it on their grill or on their griddle, and they're just kind of heating it up like I'm going to show, show you how to do here. Instead of 15 or 16 bucks for one of those salads at a restaurant, right, four bucks for something like this and it's a side dish for like five or six people it's crazy but yes we are absolutely going to do it on the grill and i want to know right off that where these are there we go and you just dump it right on that really is it guys this is kind of neat now what this is going to do is as soon as the moisture of course hits that griddle top or as soon as the uh, uh veggies hit that griddle top it's going to start to release its moisture right that's that little sizzle you hear so you don't want this too super stinking hot 
because we're not looking to char, we're not looking to burn, we are just looking to wilt. And now I'm going to give you another little piece of advice. Let this kind of visit all the little corners of your griddle because what this is going to do is a nice little job of helping to clean. Watch this. If you can get in here, I know the light's a little tough. Come on, come on around this side. I'm going to kind of reveal right here. Watch when I scratch this over. Look at this. Look at how clean that griddle, griddle top is, man. Isn't that pretty? Now, I'm not saying, you know, always clean the griddle with your food, and we always clean it in between time, but every now and then, you run a little, uh, little salad, lettuce, spinach, whatever over this. Whew, pretty good. I always say that, uh, you know, when you work with one of these things, every meal that you make, you leave your family signature on that griddle top. So when you eat something like this, and you start incorporating those flavors that are, you know, almost like a seasoned pan, oh, so cool. All right, so there we go. We're getting there. We're getting... These are like scrambled eggs, man. You, uh, they'll go quick. They'll go real quick. You want to be careful. <laughs> there we are. There we are. All right, I think, I think we're there. So let's go ahead. Warm salads are really nice. I don't know if you guys are uh, fans or if you've ever tried them, but oh, boy, they're good. All right, there we go. And my super clean griddle top. So let's bring that. I'll clean that up in a, in a minute. Let's bring that and this over here. There you go, Maria. You're a hard worker. But, uh, you know what? Run and grab Roman too. Let's try one of these while the uh, while the steak's resting. These look so good. I'm telling you, man. This this is virtually all crab. Let me open one of these up here. Not in here. Check, 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 check. Look at that. Isn't that oh. something? Virtually all crab, you guys. Just barely enough filler in there to hold it all together. We got to try this. Now I'm a tartar sauce guy. I know Trish isn't. Mmm, 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 oh my god, Roman, get over here, man, you gotta try this. Wow, those are as good as you think they are. Hush puppies? Mmm, no, crab. Oh. Yeah, hush puppies. No, man, it's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Mmm. Oh my god. Isn't that good? That is so good. Sometimes deep frying is the way to go, man, I gotta tell you. These are so good. All right, man, we'll make sure you get another one at dinner. You want to try? You're not the biggest crab fan. All right, try it again. Mm. Here, do me a favor, Roman. Take that in. Oh, <laughs> Trish almost killed me. There we go. By the way, look at that. Mm. Get a hand. <laughs> I love it. Mm. All right, take those inside for me. Thank you very much. All right, that was good. <coughs> Oh, mm. excuse me. Ah. They're very good. We almost had to have the kids do a hands around the world here and Heimlich me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Death by Crab on Facebook. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, so here we go. Now let's go ahead and take these guys. Oh, scissors. Did I not bring out scissors? Like a fool I am. Here we go. We'll get our salad ready. And you know what? These are just all the stuff that came with it. That's all it is. This is all about the flavors that you pick up when you put it on that griddle top, man. I promise you. Promise you, promise you. If the whole idea of a grilled salad seems kind of weird to you, don't let it be. You got to try it one time, man. One time. You're going to absolutely fall for it. My, uh, my Aunt Christine, oh boy, can't deal with salad, man. Not a fan. We made this for and second helping. So even if you're uh, if you're not a big salad person, give this a whirl. You might like it. All right, so that's got to take care of that. There we go. And I think that has been about 10 minutes. What do we think? Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Here we go. Oh, boy. All right. There we are. Now, let's cut this quick because I think we're going to get to... We, uh, we always attract the unwanted... Uh, Unwanted uh, in the flying guys when this uh, when the good stuff comes out. So let's go ahead and cut into this, guys. This makes it all worth the effort. Look what's happening here. That is a perfect medium rare, little bit rarer as you get to the center, which is cool because you get uh, everybody's happy. You can get the well done guys on the short end, and then uh, like uh, Trish who likes a little bit more red in the middle. This turned out perfect, and I am going to take two seconds to have a bite. Let's get it all sliced up. Oh, isn't that nice? One more time. 
Yeah, that's really pretty. So guys, thanks for joining us again. We really appreciate it. You know, as always, hit that share button, that like button, that follow button. We're always going to have some really fun recipes for you. Uh, when we come on, uh, I think it's uh, tomorrow for National Garlic Day. We're going to have a couple of winners for you. We didn't get uh, Scott quite in time. Let's go ahead and check out a piece of this. So yeah, Mary, oh, oh, it just pulled apart. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Perfect. Man, that's good. All right, Trish, uh, take us out on the food there while I go and try not to choke. <laughs> <laughs> try the <laughs> try those crab cakes. <coughs> Excuse me, try that steak. Guys, and for sure, for sure, for sure, try that grilled salad. My name's Mark Gill. This has been Marks on the Grill. I'm gonna go and take a nice big chug of water. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow for National Garlic Day. <laughs>